For centuries, Tasmania's southern mountains have stood silently above its impressive forest resources, through which wind in courses untamed to the sea many rivers and streams. A short while ago, these forests yielded little but saw logs from accessible parts. Today, a new venture has brought a dynamic present and future. Eucalypt forests are managed to provide vital materials for Australia's progressive paper industry. Old forests are replaced with sturdy growing stands. There has come an era of continuity for the forest heritage of southern Tasmania. An era initiated by Australian Paper Manufacturers Limited with the creation of the Port Huon Pulp Mill. The first anywhere to bulk ship pulp pellets. Port Huon Pulp Mill is built on historic ground. It was here amid these existing foundations that eucalypt pulp pioneers experimented successfully more than 30 years ago. Mill site and pulpwood resources became available to APM at the end of 1959 and the construction of the mill began. By 1961, the State Housing Department began homes for mill employees and staff in nearby Jeevston. An access bridge to the site was built by the Public Works Department. Some two miles upstream from Chiefston, the Hydroelectric Commission made a 235 million gallon dam at Riley's Creek to give the mill security of water in dry weather. APM put a tidal barrage below the access bridge to dam up fresh water for the mill. Construction went ahead, plant, office buildings, installations went up to the plans of the company's architects and engineers. Best methods were used and much care was taken to preserve trees and the pleasing setting. As the company's product was to be shipped to its paper and paperboard mill at Botany in New South Wales, APM built a wharf and elevated loading gantry downstream from the mill at Whale Point. The motor vessel Kirribilli brought to Port Huon the huge continuous digester that is the heart of the mill's pulping equipment. It was taken by road to the site. Erection of its massive 35 tons proceeded smoothly. From the haulage truck, a steady lift into the building and into position. Work neared its end on Commandy River Dam, on the wood chip storage bin, the conveyor tunnel. Steadily, the carefully planned mill took shape. A mill needs more than huge amounts of wood and water. It needs power. This was met by the Hydroelectric Commission. A 110 kilovolt transmission line was strung over the mountains from Hobart and its lofty pylons were assembled by Italian contractors. One of the last construction tasks was the concreting over of the chip conveyor tunnel under the chip storage pile. Scientific techniques were used here as elsewhere on the mill fabric. As the undertaking soared, networks of pipes, steam and airlines snaked everywhere in bewildering pattern, but all according to plan. Attention narrowed to important equipment such as the oil furnace used for heating air, for drying pulp before pelleting, the wiring of the main switchboard, on which spare panels anticipate later extension of the mill. Already in the forest, logging contractors were at work building up a stock of pulp wood 
to ensure adequate supplies for the mill startup. Large areas of the Huon forests are old growth. A significant problem for the Tasmanian Forestry Commission in managing these forests was to find a market for the big volume of low-grade timber which is unsuitable for saw milling. Unless such wood is removed, a eucalypt forest cannot be regrown properly. Only a pulp mill provides a market for such wood. The Forestry Commission offered APM the rights to pulp wood in the old growth and regrowth Huon forests. After testing the wood, APM took up these rights and began the Port Huon project. A detailed plan of operations for them was drawn up by the Commission and Company. This included coordinated production of saw logs for millers and pulp wood for APM. Forests of the Huon can now be fully used. Old forests can be converted into good regrowth after saw logs and pulp wood are removed. All the wood of the regrowth forests is used too, thinnings and waste wood left after sawmill logging being used for pulp wood. Conversion to pulp wood of huge old growth logs presented a problem which was overcome by a mechanical splitter that slices logs into billets as easy as a bean cutter. The billets are taken to the mill in trucks. Pulp wood is obtained in various ways in regrowth. One is to thin for pulp wood poorer trees which may die or if left to grow would be of no use as sawmill logs. Trees from regrowth can be chipped whole. No splitter is needed. After the bark is removed and the trees cut to length, the billets are put on pallets, then winched to trucks which go to the mill. Much of the cut over old growth reseeds and reproduces naturally after proper logging. Burning or bulldozing treatment is done by the Forestry Commission when needed. Sometimes the natural seed source is not enough in old growth or in certain kinds of regrowth and carefully prepared seed globules are sown after burning or bulldozing. In about two years the young eucalypts of the future forest are well established. Pulping at Port Huon is a product of vision, patient research, careful preparation and a highly trained team at the mill. Billets pass through washing sprays to the whirling knives of a 1,000 horsepower machine which converts seven foot logs to tiny chips in about two seconds. These are blown through a pipe to a storage pile trimmed by a front-end loader. The chips travel through the conveyor tunnel and are blown through a six-inch pipe to the chip storage bin on top of the digester tower. From the bin, they are metered into a low-pressure pre-steaming vessel where they are mixed with the cooking solution. The cooking liquor is a mixture of sodium sulphite and sodium carbonate. This is made by burning molten sulphur and absorbing the sulphur dioxide produced in a solution of soda ash. Loaders feed the sulphur and soda ash to the chemical plant. The chips are pressure cooked as they drop down at a controlled rate from the top to the bottom of the digester. Pulp from the digester is washed free from cooking chemicals in a vacuum washer 
then partly dried with hot air and fed to the pelleting mills. Port Huon's pulping system, known as the Neutral Sulfite Semi-Chemical Process, was modified by APM scientists to suit Tasmania's tough timbers. In the mill laboratory, pulp is beaten in a special apparatus and test strips are made in a hydraulic press which simulates the operation of a paper machine. Much of Port Huon pulp is used to make corrugated paper used in fibre containers. So the test strips are corrugated to try them for strength. These and other tests ensure that the mill has a continual accurate check on how the pulp will perform on the company's paper machines. Pellets from the pelleting mills are conveyed to the storage hopper from which the pulp is dropped into trucks and taken about a half mile to a storage area next to the wharf. A red letter day at Port Huon was the arrival of the Komona to take the first pulp shipment for APM's Botany Mill in New South Wales. Pellets from the storage pile are shoveled onto the loading conveyor by a big front end loader. The conveyor carries the pellets the length of the wharf to the gantry. Up aloft, the gantry operator directs bulk loading of the pellets, which are weighed, then dropped through a telescopic chute. The operator ensures even stowage by traversing a thrower, which directs pellets to the extremities of the ship's hold. After unloading at Sydney, the pellets are taken in special trucks to the mill, where they're stacked in piles and later reclaimed and slushed with water as required. Pulp is fed to the giant number no. 7 paper machine, which can turn out a 17 foot wide sheet at 1500 feet per minute. Machine operators keep a constant watch as the pulp fibres mesh and form rapidly into paper. Steam heated drying cylinders enclosed within removable aluminium hoods speed the paper production process. The dried paper winds onto a reel at the end of the machine. As the reel reaches its correct size, the paper is cut by compressed air and transferred to a new reel without stopping the machine. Finished reels are lifted by crane to rewinders and cutters, which rewind and cut them at high speed into widths required by the company's customers. They're then wrapped, stenciled and transported to the client's factories. Port Huon now takes its place beside Maryvale Mill, APM's main pulp mill in Victoria, a hundred miles east of Melbourne. These mills produce the raw materials for corrugating paper and paper sacks. At this Tasmanian paper sack factory, reels are fed to bag making machines. The paper is folded, cut into lengths, stitched, stacked, printed, then bundled for dispatch to the users. Multi-wall paper sacks are now used for a wide range of substances, from chemicals, cement, superphosphate, to sugar and flour. Corrugating paper is used at container making plants in Tasmania and elsewhere for making strong fibre board containers. Uses for corrugated containers are expanding all the time. The Huon Valley's biggest industry, apple growing, is fast becoming a bigger user of this type of packaging. Australians can take pride in the unique Port Huon project, 
which secures the future of the wonderful southern forest of Tasmania and which adds to the wealth of the nation.